In today's video, we're gonna be personalizing my dream helmet, and that's gonna be the Stilo ST5 Carbon. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we have the Stilo ST5 in Carbon. Before getting into the details of this video, I do wanna say first and foremost that, you know, this helmet, you're definitely paying a style and popularity premium here. Um, it is, uh, on the higher end of the price range, you know, brand new, this, this helmet's gonna be 2000 uh, US and, and up, depending on how you accessorize it. Um, and that is to say, you know, this, this is, yes, it's, it's high on safety, it's a lightweight helmet, uh, it's well-constructed, very reputable brand, uh, but what you're paying for, uh, a lot of this is, is paddock fashion. Uh, so let's just keep that in mind. Um, that, um, you know, if you convince yourself to buy this, uh, this helmet, uh, you're doing it uh, mostly because it, it looks really, really good. Um, and, you know, that's okay. Uh, paying for um, styling and um, a, a unique look uh, is okay. Um, that is considering that the utmost priority is that the helmet needs to fit. Uh, luckily for me, uh, this helmet does fit the shape of my head comfortably uh, and so that allowed me to to really consider this as an option uh, for racing. Things that we're actually going to accessorize the helmet with today are one, a uh, iridium lens. I got the medium red iridium lens to, to go on there. Uh, some of the other items are going to be more on for the accessory port. So we're going to have a IMSA communications cable and um, what I'm actually gonna do with this is uh, hard mount it onto the helmet with some 3M pads, uh, as well as some zip ties, uh, so that it's really easy to hook right into the radio system. The last thing that we're gonna put in is um, a port uh, for a quick release for water. Uh, and that's gonna go on the opposite side port here. These two ports are actually interchangeable um, and I'll kind of get into the details as to why uh, you may want to flip the comms depending on whether the car that you're driving is left-hand drive or right-hand drive. So why don't we get started first uh, with hard mounting the uh, IMSA coil cable. Before getting into accessorizing, let me talk about what makes this helmet so special. So um, outside of the obvious of the looks, um, you know, it looks really cool. I think a lot of people kind of uh, mentioned that it has that kind of um, stormtrooper uh, or like a TIE fighter pilot kind of look to it because of these almost like side pods for, for the comms. And what they allow you to do is just have these fixed ports for here is, is for uh, a radio and here is right now it's plugged, but we're gonna be using that for, uh, for water. It uh, has the Hans posts built in from factory. Um, this is like a standard option that's, that just comes with most of the helmets that you can buy at retailers. Uh, what's really cool about the, uh, the lens, the visor, is that it's actually a two position visor. So if we look at this uh, peg here, where my hand is, see how there are two stops on it. And when you bring down the visor, it can click onto the first stop. And what that allows you to do is actually have a tiny gap underneath the visor to let air flow in. Um, you could, if it's uh, necessary to have it fully closed, push it again and it goes in one more stop to have it firmly closed and have a, a airtight seal at the visor. The visor also comes integrated with these uh, tabs for ripaways, uh, for more open wheel or karting. Um, I could potentially see it if, you, if you're doing endurance and you have uh, a car with no roof and it's raining, uh, that it might be necessary to have ripaways as well and you have the, the mounts for them uh, to, to use it right away. So the SD5 comes in two shell sizes. That's the interesting thing to remember. And it's usually the case with most helmets um, that regardless of what size you get, it's gonna belong to usually one of two uh, exterior shell sizes or, or casts. So for Stilo, 60 and above is going to be in the large shell and anything below 60 is going to be in the small shell. What that actually means is no, even if you get the 60, which is the large, or you get the 63, which I believe is like a, a double XL, 
the exterior of that helmet is actually gonna be exactly the same size. The only thing that's different, I believe, in the Stilos is your cheek pads, as well as the foam at the bottom of the helmet, or rather the top of the helmet. So what that means is that because you can buy the cheek pad sizes separately, and they're measured in millimeters, you can actually create a custom fit helmet uh, to your liking uh, by mixing and matching. And in most cases, when, you, when a helmet doesn't fit you uh, in terms of comfort of the padding, it's almost always the cheek pads that is gonna be creating the, the, the hot spots or, or pressure uh, if you're already using the large size um, casting or, or, or exterior helmet. And that brings up a pretty good topic around fit in general. I know there were some questions on my last video about my HJC helmet. How should you think about fit? Um, generally, what I recommend folks do is, you know, start with the helmet in person. Start with the helmet that you think uh, is the, the right fit for you. Maybe it's a medium. If it fits well, always considering taking a step down to a smaller size until you find one that you start feeling a little bit of pressure and, and a little bit of discomfort. Uh, because uh, the helmets will mold a tiny, tiny bit. Um, and you don't want the helmet to become too loose on your head. So uh, start with the one that you think will fit, then step down until you start feeling some discomfort. I guarantee you almost always the, the part that's going to uh, agitate you first is probably your, your cheeks and your jaw. So a good test is if you can't keep your mouth or your jaw closed, comfortably and at rest, chances are the cheek pads are too tight. Um, if you have hot spots on the top or the rear of the head or the, the temples, that's usually a case of less of the padding and more of the shape of the helmet itself. So still try to, to upsize in that case, uh, but you may actually have to look at different manufacturers just to get that right fit. Okay, so let's get started with hard mounting the IMSA cable first. So how the integrated comms works is you have your connector, your IMSA connector is going to go here on this exterior port that connects to your radio system. On the inside of the helmet, we actually have a integrated uh, microphone there and each of the ear pads inside are actually uh, speakers, so it's integrated. Now, there are two options for the comms. The version that I have, which has the speakers in the earmuffs, there's another version where you can add a exterior uh, 3.5 millimeter jack here, which is where you see this plugged up uh, bung where you can mount that. Um, and to be honest, the 3.5 millimeter, it's what I had on the HTC helmet. And it's also in professional racing, you tend to see that more because you get uh, the combination of in-ear uh, earphones as well as kind of using them as, as earplugs as well. But I find the, the earmuffs, um, they're pretty good in terms of sound attenuation and isolation. Um, at the same time, you know, with grassroots motorsports, you're not just a driver, but you're also uh, pitting and you're crewing. And sometimes having that extra item that you have to put in and get comfortable, and sometimes it, it doesn't go on easily. Um, and when you take it off, it can be painful at times as well. Uh, I found that I'm going to try this year with the integrated uh, earphones in the, in the ear pads. Uh, and see how it goes um, because having that one less item to worry about really uh, saves uh, a lot of, of time and, and realistically lowers your stress when you're about to hop into the car on short notice if it's an unscheduled pit. So essentially we're gonna route the cable like so, um, plugging into the helmet, route it around here, and then we're gonna mount some Velcro and attach the cable to the top here. So. The reason why I mentioned that you, you may want to think about which side you put uh, your cables on is you're not going to be the one that's plugging this in into the radio system. It's going to be your teammate who's helping you. Uh, so if you're driving left hand side, put this on the left side. If you're driving right hand side, uh, put it on the right side so that the person helping you into the car and getting situated uh, will be able to easily grab this and plug it into the radio. So the way that we're gonna mount the coil and keep it tucked along the surface of the helmet is by using these uh, 3M zip tie mounts. So these just uh, 3M uh, double-sided tape on one side 
um, and you have these slots that you can run these small zip ties through and keep this uh, pinned against the helmet. Now, one thing you wanna take care of is as you route it back to the, to the back of the helmet, you wanna steer clear of your Hans post. Um, I recommend mounting this cable uh, top side of your posts um, because if you put it bottom side, you could, through pulling the, the cable, start having it lodged between the Hans clip and the mount. And the last thing you wanna do is that pressure to start depressing the post and releasing your clip. So mount it to the top because your Hans post is gonna come towards the rear and start angled downward. That way the, the, the tension for both these things are gonna be in opposite ways um, because usually you're gonna have your radio connector kind of coming uh, off of the, the roof line of the car uh, from like a, a top uh, bar of the roll cage is usually where you, you, you keep the, the female connector uh, for your radio. Before we start mounting up the 3M, I'm gonna use some um, just alcohol wipes to clean the surface of the helmet so we know that the, the mount is gonna stay nice and uh, nice and firm and have a good good seal. Now for the top side, because we need this to be removable, but we still want it to be held in place when not used, we're gonna use Velcro on the surface of the helmet as well as around the body of the connector here. One thing to keep in mind as you mount this is uh, take note of the clearance for the visor. So it looks like where we want to place it is no, for, no more forward than about here so that we don't get in the way of the visor itself when it comes up. So somewhere around here. And just to prevent lifting uh, of the adhesive, I'm just gonna round out the corners so that there's not much to get caught on if there's something that, that rubs against it and starts to peel it off. Now for the connector, we want to, again, cut this uh, uh, opposite side of the Velcro to size, wrap it around with the adhesive backing, and then use zip ties to cinch it there and keep it fixed. Awesome, so that's kind of the position it's gonna be in. We'll add zip ties onto the uh, Velcro body here and to take up some of the slack in the back because when you're not using the connector, um, you're gonna have that flapping going on if you're just going for a track day in a street car. Uh, we're gonna tuck this in the back by adding a little bit more Velcro along the line um, in some strategic places. Let's add the zip ties to this for now so that it's super secure. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna add one more piece back here and wrap some Velcro around this line just so that we have a place to kind of pin it. And I think the rest feels pretty good that it's gonna stay in place while we're on track. All right, cool. So pretty happy with how this all turned out. As you can see, it takes a little bit of trial and error of exactly where we want to put these 3M pads. But let me kind of show you how the entire routing works. So we've got from the port uh, to this one 3M pad here that is about an inch uh, forward of the Hans post. Uh, another one about three quarters of an inch rearward that is angled slightly to uh, vertical um, so there's a little bit of difference here to force a bit of a hump uh, in the line to go over the Hans post. And the way that I made it um, sustain that kind of slight curve is to not only angle the, um, the pads differently, but also to put two zip ties here to keep it uh, parallel to the, the, um, the slope of the, of the pad here as well. Now going up the line, um, this is where beyond this point, you don't wanna have any fixed anchors because this length uh, can stretch, but everything beyond this point can stretch with the coil. Now that's why we want to place these Velcro pads and put Velcro on the line itself. 
uh, to be able to uh, attach and remove from the surface of the helmet very easily, not only from this point, uh, but also at the terminal end as well. Again, with the terminal, we wanna make sure that it clears the visor when you put the visor back so it doesn't get in the way. Um, and um, the reason why we put this anchor, this, this uh, detachable anchor here is so that this is not flapping all the time when you're just doing a, a track day. It's already gonna have a little bit of noise, uh, but if you didn't have this anchor, you didn't have this anchor, it would be moving quite a bit as your head is moving as well. When I'm adding these pads, uh, these th Velcro pads, I like to follow a line on the helmet. So as you can see, there's a ridge here and I just tucked this uh, Velcro pad along this line. Just looks a little bit cleaner. The next item that we'll install is this uh, male to male uh, water port um, quick disconnect that goes into the, the empty port on the right hand side of the helmet. How this works is on the exterior, you're gonna uh, press fit this in. Um, and on the inside of the helmet, we're gonna have this drink tube. And on the end of the drink tube, we're gonna have this bite valve. And so this is made to work with a female quick disconnect end uh, with a camel back. And essentially we're gonna put the camel back pouch uh, on the back of the seat. One thing to note for this is you always get a little bit of extra length. Obviously you don't need the two to be this long. Oh. Um, but uh, before cutting it to length, um, you can't add length back, but you can always cut more. So just work slowly, work your way through as you kind of figure out uh, where you want to place this bite valve. To get this started, we're actually going to uh, slightly remove the cheek pad. And what's cool about the cheek pads in the Stilo helmets is, as, as I kind of pull this out, we'll be able to see. You'll notice that the pad itself is recessed here to accept tubing uh, for the drink valve, um, as well as for calm lines to run through so they don't get pinched. It's a really nice feature, um, part of the premium that you kind of pay for these helmets because they manufacture these accessory ports. They also keep in mind how to keep the installation very easy as well. So applying a little bit of pressure on the inside, we'll be able to remove this uh, press fit cap and we'll just hold on to this for later. Now here is our male to male quick disconnect. The barb side goes uh, through the O-ring side for the quick disconnect stays on the exterior of the helmet. And that's just literally a, a feels like there's a little bit of rubber on the inside, keeping this um, pretty snug and secure as just a, a friction fit. So on the inside, we see that part of the barb for the drink port is exposed. Let's see what you get there. And that is where we're going to connect the uh, female end of the tube uh, right onto these barbs. And it's that simple. This tube is now there. Uh, we will want to cut this to length. And then all we have to do is put uh, the bite valve on the other end there and we're good to go. I'll save the trimming for another day and just leave the bite valve on here so I don't lose it. All right, so now we have both side ports being occupied uh, and set up. So we'll move on to changing out the clear visor uh, for our Iridium Shield one. So it looks like to remove the existing visor, we're just gonna have to find a hex key that fits. Uh, could be like a, maybe an M4. Uh, and we will remove this one bolt or screw on each side to remove the visor. So this is a really nicely machined screw. It almost looks like it could be a thumb screw because it's knurled, um, but I mean, it's, it's recessed in there so you can't really get a hand on it. Um, as you remove the screw, this, um, this washer um, is gonna pop out as well. Really cool to see that it is also textured on the back to prevent it from spinning. Um, and I guess this just helps to keep it a, a smooth uh, moving action so that it's the, the, the screw is not abrasive against any other surface of the helmet. So I'll just keep that in place so that it doesn't crack the other side as we move on over. All right, so our clear visor is removed. Really cool thing about the uh, new visor that I got, it did come with a carrying case just for the visor. 
um, which, you know, for, for a visor that's nearly $200, I mean, yeah, I'd kind of expect that. Uh, so we're gonna put this one into the, the pouch that I came in. And our nice Stila branded pouch. I'm really hoping that in the next iteration of this helmet that they keep the same lens shape so I can just reuse this if it's not too tattered up. Cool, so let's store this away, never to be seen again. It didn't take too much pressure to remove these, so I'm thinking you don't need to tighten them down too, too much. Um, remember that it needs to have enough of a hold so that the bolt's not gonna back out um, and you know the visor will stay up when it's in the up position, uh, but not too much friction that it's gonna be hard to move the visor up and down. Interestingly enough, you see that there's a bit of um, play in terms of the concentricity of the, the screw to the watcher itself. So if you find that your visor is not um, perfectly square, check that these two items, so the screw and the washer are concentric, um, and uh, you could probably get like two or three millimeters of play just from getting that uh, centered as, as much as possible like I'm doing here. Um, now that they're, they're centered, we can snug it down. All right, looks pretty good. And I think that's about it. So check it out. The uh, completed product with our uh, hardwired or hard mounted, I should say, uh, comm system, our male quick disconnect for water um, and the new Iridium medium uh, depth lens here. Quick note on why I went with the medium. Uh, it's mostly because I find whenever I have an Iridium lens and it's like a full reflective version, I rarely actually have it all the way down because I find it is usually too dark and I lose a lot of the detail uh, when I'm out on track. Uh, speaking with, with, um, with some uh, helmet makers and with Stilo, they typically say that it's the younger crowd that like to go with the, the full strength and as uh, they deal with more mature drivers, they tend to, to go with the medium ones. Uh, so I guess it's just a sign of aging. So that was a quick look at the Stilo SD5 Carbon and how I like to set it up for endurance racing. What do you think of the setup? How do you set up your helmet to make it as comfortable and as functional as possible for those two hour stints? Let's continue the conversation in the comments below. We'll catch you guys in the next one.